Well, independent federal MP Zali Stegall is reintroducing her climate change bill into Parliament to pressure the PM ahead of global, t global talks in Glasgow later this month. Calls for a 60% cut in emissions by 2030, as well as a net zero target by 2050. The member for Warringah joins me now from Sydney. Good morning to you. Welcome to News Breakfast. Good morning, Lisa. Hey, before we get into the uh, climate talk, we were just speaking to the New South Wales Premier. There's talk that his predecessor might make a bid for your seat. What do you reckon about that? Uh, look, I question, questions of integrity are incredibly important, and we know this is a problem at federal uh, uh, government level. We have had scandal after scandal and rorts, car park rorts, uh, sports rorts, you know, Leppington land sale. We desperately need a federal integrity commission, and so I feel strongly uh, that it is as an independent that I will make sure we push for a strong federal integrity commission in, uh, in Parliament uh, to, to really keep check on what the Australian government is doing. And so, look, she, you know, I, I just don't think that she will prosecute that very important need. As an independent, you're putting forward this uh, uh, bill in relation to climate change. You want to see a 60% reduction from 2005 by 2030. You tried this in July and it didn't go anywhere. Why do you think it's going to change this time? Well, what's very important is overwhelmingly the business sector, the private sector, industry, unions, medical association, planners, all have said loud and clear that the climate change bills is the policy framework we need to offer certainty and stability for investment, to have a clean and effective transition to the net zero economy that is coming. Now, why we need to... I'm introducing it now because we are on the eve of the Olympics of international policy. COP26, history will remember the leaders who show up and show up with a plan to win a gold medal. Uh, and at the moment, we have a government who, and Prime Minister who's saying, look, I don't even want to go to the Olympics, I don't want to go to COP26, and I'm not even planning on turning up with a plan that puts us on the podium. I don't think that's acceptable. We have uh, something like $65 billion in investment by 2025 that is possible if we have clear uh, a clear roadmap, clear targets and clear commitments. So it's vital for Australia's new economy and for our recovery that we set that clear trajectory and that commitment uh, to net zero and that clear commitment by 2030. There's no point on talking down the road. 2030 is the important deadline that we need to be uh, focused on. Uh, we've already uh, used up 85% of the carbon budget to keep to global warming in check. We don't have time to delay this. But 60% reduction is almost double the current Australian target. Absolutely. Uh, keep in mind the US uh, have committed to 52%, the UK have committed to 68%. So I would argue 60% by 2030 is an important aspirational target. Because what we need to remember is technology needs targets to urge and to drive investment and uptake and you will see that acceleration go from there. We've already seen it at a state level with clear commitment, clear policy. We've seen that investment th uh, grow um, and flow through and the benefit to communities. Just last week the research shows that Families stand to benefit $5,000 a year in cost cutting, so save $5,000 if we urgently electrify households, you know, from cooking, heating, uh, transport, and we make sure we really accelerate uptake of solar power solar PV and batteries, um, that is a huge saving to Australian households. We need to get on board with where that new economy is going to be at. We're all going to be talking um, election matters maybe sooner than next year. Uh, Simon Holmes Accord is fielding candidates or supporting candidates under this Climate 200 banner. Uh, just how many candidates do you think are going to be like the Zali Steggles heading into a federal election and how powerful do you think they can be? 
Look, what I'm hearing loud and clear is a dissatisfaction from voters with the major parties. They are fouling the Australian people on very important policy issues like climate, like integrity, uh, like political advertising. We simply don't have good governance at the moment. So people are looking for alternatives and that is what independents offer. We are focused on our communities. We are a voice for our communities, not the party room back deals. So, uh, look, the movement of Climate 200 is a fantastic initiative because for all the people frustrated at our lack of climate policy, they are able to really put their support behind an initiative. Now, they are not picking candidates. They are simply facilitating, I guess, the fundraising process uh, to even the playing field a little because mm. what we know is the current status quo favours the major parties and the incumbents. So they are simply evening the, you know, levelling out the playing field so that every, every MP has to work hard to represent their community. Zali Segal, no doubt, will speak again. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Lisa.